Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and this is the video series we're doing on review of raw data, raw survey data in Trimble Business Center. And this is the eighth video in that series. So in video number seven, we showed you how to back out a network project from a working project when you used RTN your first time out to a job to set control. And so in this video, we're actually going to walk through the very last step of my raw data review process. And I haven't showed you that yet in any of the videos. And so we're, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and close this network project now. And we're going to open up, we're going to open that working project back up. All right, so we've got that project open. This is the project we were working in before. And the last step I do in my raw data review process after I've imported the data, made sure the field crew followed the plan, resolved any flags, air flags, and locked down the control, the last thing I do is I just go in and make sure that at every setup, the field crew has essentially followed good practices or used good methods, okay, or followed the instructions that they, that they were given on the project. I'm going to go in and clean up a couple of these. We've got some duplicate nodes here. I'm just going to delete. Okay, so when you look at this particular file here, we're in this daily job file, okay? And the imported files, just drop this down so we can look at the structure here of the file. This, and this is in chronological order. Okay, what we want to do is we just want to make sure, did the guys follow good procedure to the extent that we can tell from the raw data? Um, did they follow good procedures at every setup? Okay, and it's also obviously very helpful to have the field notes when you're doing this. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is, uh, what did they do here when they set up? They they got their network rover out. They initialized this virtual base here, three two zero one, and so what did they do here when they had that virtual base up? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up the properties dialog here, and I'm going to look at this first vector. And a couple quick things I'm going to look at is. Do they got the right rod height in here? So, yep, they do. They got a two-meter base, okay? And I want to know how long was that occupation. It was two minutes. That's what I told them. Look at the same thing here, two-meter rod. This is a, a little bit long. It's a four-minute occupation, but that's okay. I'd rather be long than short. Okay, so, so far, the guys are doing all right. They set up their RTN base. They set these two points as an azimuth pair. Um, they had the right rod height. They occupied for the correct amount of time. You know, my PDOT values are reasonable. So, so far, it's looking good, guys. All right. Okay, now, down here, we set up an on-site base. Okay, and so the very first thing I want to know when they set up that on-site on base is, uh, do they have a, um, let's just look at it. Do they have a reasonable antenna height? They do. Okay, I can see they've got the Trimble R10 on here, so this all looks good. Now, the very first thing they should do as a general rule, the very first thing they should do at every setup is they should have a check. They should have a check shot at the beginning of the setup, and they should have a check shot at the end of the setup. Now, they didn't have a check shot at this first setup because there was no existing control on site, right? So when they when they set these first two points, there's nothing to check into. But when they move this RTK base over here to point number 10,000, okay, so they've set up the RTK base now, there are other control points they can check into so they can come over and check to this other point that they set. And so that should be the very first thing they do. So I'm going to click on the very first vector here from this RTK base. Okay. And I can see they shot 2000, uh, 23,000 here. Okay. And so what I want to know is, was that a check shot or not? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up that point and I can see right away it's an Aztec point. And I can see in their description that they're checking into 10,001. Right down here, I get my residuals. I got pretty good residuals on that. Okay, so my field crew gets kudos on this one. Gets a pat on the back. Very first thing they did after they set up that base was check in. All right, now I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the list because hopefully the very last thing they did, right, before they tore down that base was they checked in again. Okay. And actually, for some odd reason, the way this this uh, file worked out, they actually split the vectors into two two clusters here, or two nodes. Okay, so I got to drop down to this list. So here's the last shot they took, 23,078. So I want to know, was that a check shot or not? So I'm going to select the point by vector, 
And guess what? This is a ground shot. So this is not a check shot like I wanted. Okay. So what I like to do just quickly is scroll up this list and say, oh, maybe they took their check shot and then realized they needed a couple more shots here. I don't like that, but I can understand why it would happen. So I'm just scrolling up the list here, and all I got is these ground shots. Okay. So I was just giving the crew a pat on the back. Uh, now i got to take that pat on the back away because guess what? They tore down that base, that RTK base, without an ending check shot. All right, so that's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up my notes here. Those same notes that we were filling out before. And I'm just going to add a note here because I need to go over this with the crew. Uh, no check shot taken at the end of the survey. I'll just say the observations from the RTK base on control point. <clears throat> okay, so we want to make a note of that so I can get that field, uh, that uh, feedback back to the field crew. Okay, so it's not the end of the world. We didn't get an ending check shot, which means if there was any problem with this base after it was set up, I'm not going to know. Okay, so I'm, I don't like that. I'm not super thrilled about that. Okay, the other thing we want to check while we're in here is I'm, I'm just going to grab some of these topo shots here just real quick, make sure we're still at a two-meter rod. And looks like these are three-second observations, most of them, th two, three-second observations. Um, On-site base, that's probably okay for a dirt shot. Um, I do want to come down here and take a look when I'm tying out these aerial targets. We looked at this earlier, but I just confirmed that these were two-minute observations. Okay, because I don't want a three-second observation on an aerial target. That's that would be a problem. Okay, so it looks like the guys did a good job on all this, except they didn't take their ending check shot. As we talked about in the earlier video, I got a couple of these observations where the tilt sensor is way out. So I got to talk to the crew and find out what's going on there. Okay, so that takes care of their setup on the uh, on control point ten thousand one with the RTK. Base. Now we're going to go in and look at their two total station setups. We got one at 10,001 and one at 10,006. Okay, so I'm going to come in here, just grab that to start, make sure that HI looks reasonable. It does. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead, let's see, we can pull up our, uh, pull up our back bearing here. Okay, this is what I'm looking for right here. So this, after you drop down your node with your back bearing, this very first node under the back bearing node should be your shot to your back sight. And you can see, you can see it's got that symbol there, the kind of target symbol. And so this is our back sight. So I just want to check. Got a good HI there. Looks like I got a reasonable rod height. You know, if I had a 12-foot rod height here, That'd make me a little nervous. Why, why would we be using a rod that was that top, that that tall for a back sight? Uh, they got their prism constant plugged in. Um, everything looks good to me here. Okay, so I don't see any issues with the back sight now. But the very first thing they should do, hopefully after the back sight, is a check shot. Now, I don't know how they were going to do that here because <laughs> they didn't set any other control to check into. So it would have been nice while well, they had the RTN rover or RTK rover out if they'd have set a third point they could have checked into after they got the gun set up um, at 10,001. And I don't think they were able to do that. Now just to confirm that, I'm going to grab this second vector here and see if this point number 23,079 was a check shot. Okay. And it looks like it was. Okay, so they did. They checked into 10,002, which was a target. Okay, so I have to take back what I just said. They actually did check into a target, okay, and they got good residuals there. Okay, so they did a good job of that. They set up the gun. The first thing they did after they did their back sight was they checked a, a third control point, which was an aerial target in this case. Good job. All right, now let's just look and see, did I get a check shot at the end of the setup? So I'm going to grab this uh, last node here under this back bearing. So it's the last thing they shot from this setup at 10,001. And I'm going to grab this select point by vector. And it looks like they shot the corner of the house here. So it does not look. I'm gonna just check these other, check these other couple of entries. So I didn't get an ending check shot, okay, from this setup. 
So if anything happened, they bumped a leg or there was settlement, I'm not going to know because I didn't get a closing check shot. So apparently this field crew has a problem with uh, doing a check shot at the end of their setups. Okay, So we'll see how they did if they did a closing check shot at 10,006. So we're jumping up to 10,006 now. They're set on 10,006. Drop down this back bearing node. Grab this very first element here. Should be our back sight check. So they're at 10,006. They're back sight in 10,001. They've got a reasonable HI and rod height here. And let's take a look. Looks like they got excellent residuals. Okay. So I'm happy with that back sight. Now let's come down to this last entry here and see if they shot me a check shot. Okay. And. Oh, looks like they did. So they, they took a check shot on their back sight. Okay, so that's good. They So they did do a closing check shot here. Now, one of the things we talked about in the previous video, I think it was video number six, you know, essentially they swung, this is a swing tie to 10,006, so they set it from 10,001. So they, they were at 10,001 with the gun. They, back, they made a back sight to 10,000, and they did a direct and reverse tie over here to 10,006, but... I don't like that that we've got a, essentially a swing tie here. This thing could be floating around if they busted this angle or distance. Um, so I'm not super happy about that. And to make matters worse, when they were set here, their closing check is back to their backside point. So it would have been nice if they could have tied an independent point from this setup. So in other words, everything I've got here that was shot from 10,006 is only tied back to, to this point 10,001. And there could be a bust here in the data. I'm just not going to know until we do the drafting and we see how this data fits. Okay, So they did do a, a closing check shot. That's great. Uh, but it wasn't on an independent point. So that could have been better. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple items to our notes here. So these are our notes for the field crew based on our raw data review. And I'm just going to say uh, multiple... Ending back sight checks were forgotten. And I'm going to add to that uh, back sight check from control point number 10,006. I'm going to say from setup, total station setup. was not on an independent point. Now, it may have been that they checked another point in this set of vectors, an independent point. So how do you figure that out? Well, you, you, you can do that visually, right? So I can look here and say, all right, from this point, do I have any toll station vectors to an independent point? Eh, sure doesn't. Sure looks like these are all brand new points, doesn't it? Okay, so they didn't do, I, I have no good independent check here, right? And I like to see that at the end of this list. You know, let's say they, at this shot 23116, they checked an independent point. Well, that's great. Uh, that's helpful. But that means I still got this other set of vectors here um, that could be out if the tripod got bumped or there was settlement or another problem. Okay. All right, we're at about 14 minutes, and that, that's going to wrap up that last step where I just go in to every setup on the job and I'm looking for, do they have a beginning check? Do they have an ending check? Did they follow appropriate methods? In other words, you know, if they, if they tied in a property corner, did they shoot a direct and reverse? If they were tying out an aerial target with RTK GPS, were they on there for the sufficient amount of time? So it's kind of a more detailed drilling in to this tree view than the, than the kind of the initial view so when we first o when I first open the job, the very first thing I do is take a look at this tree view for the for the daily job I'm checking in. And just say, did they follow the basic plan? Yes or no, right? That's kind of high level. In the last step, after I've cleaned up the flags and the control, I go in and I drill down into each individual setup and say, do I have my beginning and ending checks? And did they do in detail what they were told to do from every setup? Okay, did they follow good procedures? Did they follow the ins the any specific instructions I got for the job? And so as you can see on this project, you know, my crew did a pretty good job, but there's uh, some things that we can improve on and definitely some things I need to follow, follow up with on the crew. Okay, so I appreciate you guys watching the video. I, I hope it was uh, informative that you're able to uh, learn some things and that this uh, set of videos is going to help you 
review your own raw data in a tool like Trimble Business Center. And I hope you guys stay tuned to my future videos. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.